just like certain hairstyles flatter certain face shapes, certain wig styles do too. If you have a round face and a little bit of a double chin like I do, keep watching to find out what wig styles will complement your face shape. And if you're looking for specific wig suggestions, keep watching because I have those too. Hi, I'm Christine, and I am on a campaign to make wig wearing more mainstream so we can express ourselves any way we want and not have people look at us sideways just because we're wearing a wig. For practical tips on choosing and wearing wigs, wig reviews, as well as a little creative inspiration, please subscribe to my channel, hit the like button, and uh, hit the notification bell so you don't miss a video. Now, first things first, I am wearing Ellen Villa's Impress in Pastel Blonde Rooted. Now this is the first in a series I'm going to do on wig styles for specific face shapes. And I'm starting with round face because that's what I have, so it's the easiest thing for me to do. Uh, and I'm also adding maybe round face with a little bit of a double chin because I think a lot of us as we get older sort of slide there. Since I'll be doing a video on every single face shape, please subscribe so you don't miss a video. Now, before I talk about face shape, I want to talk a little bit about my philosophy and my approach to this whole what hairstyle looks best with your face shape or what clothes look best with your body shape. Basically, the guidelines that people put in place for fashion. Now, I don't subscribe to the idea that somehow the oval is the ideal face shape. Every person has certain features they want to accent and certain features they want to minimize. So this is not a video about how the oval is the best face shape and everything is designed to make you look more oval. I use timeless, quite literally thousand year old theories based in art philosophy um, about proportion and harmony and balance. I want you to view yourself as a unique work of art. So when I talk about these guidelines, I am not trying to make someone think that they should be a 21st century male idealized version of a woman that doesn't exist. I want you to use these guidelines to make yourself feel beautiful. And finally, most important, you have to feel good. Now I'm going to present guidelines based on proportion and balance and harmony, but if there's something in a style that you just feel awkward wearing, don't wear it. There is no pressure here to conform. And you will actually see an example of this later in the video when I talk about something that's recommended for round face shapes that I just don't like to wear. Got my iced coffee. You will probably be seeing me brush my hair out of my face a lot because I just pulled this wig out of the box and I haven't had time to trim the bangs yet. Now I have always had a round face and in the last decade or so I've started to sport the double chin that every female member of my family has. And since everyone in the world tells you that certain hairstyles are best for certain face shapes, I'm going to do that with wigs. See, still trying to keep the hair out, <laughs> still trying to keep the hair out of my face. Now, depending who you ask, there are about six different face shapes. There's oval, round, square, diamond, oblong, and heart-shaped. Now, if you don't know what your face shape is, I've listed some videos down below that will help you figure it out. So what is a round face shape? Well, basically, it's as long as it is wide. Now, a square face shape is also as long as it is wide. So what's the difference? The round face shape doesn't have angles. Like a square um, face shape might have a angular jaw. Round face won't have that. Our faces are soft and warm and comforting and squishy and just all the best things. And the elements that we use to flatter a round face shape will basically be designed to either make it look longer this way or narrower this way. Now, the most obvious thing you can use to make your face look longer is height on the top, which draws your eye upward. 
Now, I'm not saying you have to sport an inch of permatease. In fact, this particular wig doesn't, has a little bit, but not that much. You just don't want to wear something that is completely flat on top. And I will actually have a picture of me wearing something that is completely flat on top later in the video so you can see why that's not my best look. Even if it's just a little bit of height in the crown, a round full face needs some height up here. Another great thing to have is a strong vertical element which makes your face look narrower. A style with an asymmetrical bang will look fantastic on round faces, especially if there's height on top. Now here is an example of some a style that would be recommended for me but that I do not feel comfortable with. I love those asymmetrical bangs on other people. I love those beautiful pixies with the, you know, the high top and the sculpted back and the asymmetry of the bang right here. I just feel like an English sheepdog in them. I, I can't help it. So I just don't follow that particular tip because it's not comfortable for me. Now on the flip side, any strong horizontal element like a heavy bang or a very blunt bob is going to emphasize the width of what you're trying to narrow down. So usually not the best thing for a round face. And keep in mind that the bottom of a very blunt bob is a horizontal element. So wherever it stops, it will emphasize that, which is why I basically don't wear anything that ends between say the bottom of my cheek to my shoulder, because it's just not an area I want people to be looking at. Now you certainly can have a round face without a double chin, in which case, uh, as long as you avoid something that ends right here, you know, you can do any length between your chin and your shoulder. It's only us double chin girls that really have to go from here to here and nothing in between. So the double chin, if you're going for long hair, you just want it shoulder length or longer like the song says. Because like height will draw your eye up, length down here will draw your eye down. Either place is away from the double chin you're trying to de-emphasize. And also, hard as it is, resist the temptation to go with those beautiful wavy beach styles that come out like this in a triangle. Because again, all it's going to do is emphasize the width of your neck. Okay, so let's review one more time the general guidelines, and then we'll look at a few specific wigs that might be really flattering. First, add some height on the top. It can be a whole lot of height with great big hair, or it can be just a teeny weeny bit with a little bit of permatease. So height up in here, but as you come down here and all the way through here, narrow. Now, the first wig I want to talk about is the one I'm wearing, the Ellen Villa Impress. All my life, I have wanted to have long blonde hair, and all my life, I thought I couldn't. Now, for many years, it was because all the blondes were golden, and I have a cool skin tone, so they just looked weird. Then, when I started wearing wigs, I figured I could try a cooler color, but I got those long, beautiful, silky wigs that didn't have any height on top. So it was still bangs falling in my face and everything dragging down. What I found was that if I could just put a little bit of height on the top, whether it's permatease or whether it's um, quilt batting in the crown, and you can see if I pull this up a little bit, it makes all the difference in whether I can wear long hair. The other great thing about this wig is that it's straight. It doesn't wave out with beachy waves in a triangle shape. I can pull it back completely off my neck so it does not emphasize the width of my neck. Or I can put it in the front and sort of have it hide it. But either way, it's a vertical element, so it's narrowing everything. Noriko also has a couple of lovely styles with some height on top, but still sleekness around the side. Going from one end of the spectrum to the other, going from long hair to pixie, um, just make sure if you're going to go pixie, you've got height on the top and especially height in the crown. And avoid a heavy straight across bang, either an asymmetrical bang or a light wispy fringe. This Adele 
by Rene of Paris, this Nemo, which is I think a brand new one by Noriko, and even John Renault's classic Natalie all fall in that category. Now, if I wear anything between hair this long or a short pixie, I just make sure it doesn't end or have lots of weight like from here to my shoulder because that's going to emphasize my neck. There are several styles I love that are a little poofy on the top, not as poofy on the sides, and then hit me with little fringe about here, which looks beautiful. The Rays by Ellen Villa, which is one of my very favorite throw and go wigs, uh, as well as the Dolce from Noriko, which I'm having a super amount of fun with right now. Now, what do you do if you already have a wig that you love? Maybe it's in a color that you love or the fibers are really beautiful, but it is that flat on top, wide at the bottom, that's the opposite of what you should wear. Well, that happened to me uh, with Sister Wigs Ambrose. I had to have this wig because the color, it was the color of my dreams. But I knew just by looking at it, I would have to work with it. And I'll link the video where I go into detail on that down below. Um, but you can see on one side of the screen is what it looked like before. Completely flat, out of the box, triangle shape. Um, I, there's nothing to describe the way that this wig looks on me. <laughs> um, afterwards, I thinned and trimmed the bangs. I put some quilt batting in the crown to give it some height. And I sleek the sides with steam. Works fine. Now I've given you a whole list of wigs that would probably flatter a round face and maybe a double chin, but certainly there's lots and lots more. So let me know in the comments below, uh, first of all, if you have a face shape similar, um, and also what wigs that I didn't talk about you find really flattering. Because there may be somebody out there looking for exactly the wig advice that you can give them. For more content like this, please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button and leave a comment because that all helps YouTube decide to show my videos to more people, which is the best way that I can get the word out that wigs are one more easy but powerful way to express yourself.